it sounds like you're brainstorming a title or prompt for an HFY humanity. F. Yeah, story. Here's an idea to expand upon your concept. Title, Unexpected Visitors in the Night, Humanity's Hidden Power. Prompt, in a futuristic world, where humans have been subjugated by an alien race, a young human living under strict surveillance, hires a pair of android maids for assistance. However, these aren't just any, androids they are secretly part of an underground resistance, working to free humanity. One night, they enter the protagonist's room unannounced, only to discover their hidden secret. The protagonist possesses a unique, forbidden technology capable of turning the tide in the war against the alien overlords. The story could explore themes of rebellion, hidden talents, and the unexpected ways humanity fights back when all hope seems lost. Let me know if you'd like to develop it further. Title, Unexpected Visitors in the Night, Humanity's Hidden Power. Prompt, in a futuristic world, where humans have been subjugated by an alien race, a young human living under strict surveillance, hires a pair of android mates for assistance. However, these aren't just any, androids they are secretly part of an underground resistance, working to free humanity. One night, they enter the protagonist's room unannounced only to discover their hidden secret. The protagonist possesses a unique, forbidden technology capable of turning the tide in the war against the alien overlords. The story could explore themes of rebellion, hidden talents, and the unexpected ways humanity fights back when all hope seems lost. Let me know if you'd like to develop it further. It sounds like you're brainstorming a title or prompt for an HFY humanity. F. Yeah, story. Here's an idea to expand upon your concept. The maids, who seemed like nothing more than obedient droids, pause in shock as the hidden technology glows softly on the bedside table. They exchange silent signals before locking the door behind them, sealing the room. The protagonist, frowning in fear and confusion, scrambles to hide the device but knows it's too late. Before panic can fully set in, one of the maids breaks the silence. We weren't sent here to clean. You know, we were sent to find people like you. The protagonist, still unsure whether to trust them, keeps a guarded stance. What do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. The second maid steps forward, her eyes glowing with a different intensity now, as if her programming has shifted. You think the rebellion is only on the battlefield. It's everywhere. The technology you have is the key to the uprising. It can disable their control systems, but we need you to help us activate it. You're the last human who understands how. Suddenly, the protagonist realizes this night might be the turning point for the entire human race. The future of the rebellion rests not only on a device they thought was safely hidden, but on their ability to harness it before the aliens find out. Part 2 ends with a choice. Will the protagonist trust the mates and risk everything to join the underground resistance? Or will they try to protect their own life, knowing the danger they now face from both sides? This part could dive into building tension, moral conflict, and the choice between self-preservation and a larger purpose, keeping the sci-fi elements grounded in personal stakes and intrigue. The room feels smaller, closing in with the weight of the decision. The maids wait, their glowing eyes no longer betraying any sign of their true motives. The protagonist's heart races, torn between the fear of betrayal and the hope that this could be the moment to strike back against their oppressors. The alien overlords had stripped humanity of everything but maybe, just maybe, they hadn't taken this. I can trust you, the protagonist finally says, voice shaking, for all I know, you work for them, just waiting to turn me in. The maid closest to the door shakes her head, a faint smile forming, we don't have time for trust, we have time for survival. She steps forward, kneeling beside the glowing device, this tech it wasn't built by the aliens. It was built by humans long before they conquered us. You know how to use it because it's part of who you are, and we know you're important to the cause. A flicker of anger rises in the protagonist's chest. Thuh, how do you know that? I've been hiding here for years, keeping to myself. I don't know anything about the rebellion or your cause. The second mate stands tall, revealing a hidden compartment in her forearm, from which she pulls out a small, holographic projector, with a press of a button. The image of an elderly human, a me and the protagonist, thought they'd never see again, their old mentor, a scientist who vanished when the aliens took control. You may not remember everything, 
the mentor's hologram says. But I knew you'd find your way to this moment. You've got the power to break their hold on us. The device in your possession can hack into their central network, disable their surveillance, and turn the tide. It's time to stop hiding. The rebellion needs you. The protagonist's world crashes down in that moment. Their mentor, alive. This was too much to process, but deep down, something steals a memory long buried of secret lessons and encrypted knowledge passed on to them as a child. They do know how to use the device, and they do have the ability to change everything. What happens if I fail? The protagonist whispers, more to themselves than the maids. If you fail, the aliens will win, the maid responds coldly, and we won't get another chance. You've been chosen for this moment, now decide. With the weight of the world on their shoulders, the protagonist finally takes the device and holds it tight. There's no turning back. The rebellion's future, and humanity's, lies in their hands. Part 3 ends with the protagonist accepting their fate, preparing to take the first step toward the final battle, knowing that success could mean liberation but failure would bring total annihilation. This part ramps up the stakes, revealing a deeper connection to the rebellion, and adding emotional weight to the protagonist's journey, preparing them for a climactic showdown. The device hums softly in the protagonist's hands as the maids silently watch. The weight of their decision presses down heavily, but there is no room for hesitation anymore. The holographic message from their old mentor flickers one last time, then vanishes, leading the protagonist to face the reality of what comes next. What now? The protagonist asks, their voice steady despite the fear coiling deep inside. The first maid steps forward, pulling a sleek, wrist-mounted device from her compartment. Now we infiltrate their central command. You'll need to plug this into the system's core to unleash the virus that will disable their surveillance. It's not going to be easy. Security is tight, and the aliens are always watching for signs of rebellion. But you know the layout, don't you? The protagonist says, slipping the device into their jacket pocket. The second mate nods. We do. We've been in their systems for months, mapping out weak points. That's why we were sent to you. You're the key, but we're your guides. Together, they move through the darkened streets of the city. Their every step measured and cautious. The towering alien structures loom above them, a constant reminder of the enemy's iron grip on humanity. The protagonist's mind races as they approach the command center, heart pounding in time with each step. How do we get inside? The protagonist asks, scanning the building for an entry point. We're not walking through the front door. The maid with the wrist device responds, we've hacked into one of their maintenance tunnels. It'll lead us directly to the central core, but once we're in, it's up to you. They slip into the shadows, descending into a narrow, dimly lit tunnel beneath the city. The air is heavy with tension. Every sound, every breath, feels amplified in the tight space. The maids move with precision, but the protagonist can't shake the feeling that they are being watched. As they near the central command chamber, a sudden metallic clang echoes through the tunnel. The maids stop, their glowing eyes scanning the darkness. We've been spotted. One of them whispers, we need to move, now. The pace quickens, the once silent mission, now turned into a desperate dash toward the core. Alarms begin to blare above them, red lights flashing through the tunnel. The aliens know someone is coming. The trio bursts into the central chamber of vast, high-tech room, filled with alien consoles and a massive central core pulsating with energy. Alien guards, tall and menacing, rush toward them from all sides. This is it, the maid shouts, plug the device into the core. The protagonist sprints forward, dodging blasts of alien weaponry, their hands trembling as they reach for the core's access panel. With a single, decisive motion, they plug the device in, watching as the holographic interface flares to life. Initiate the virus, the second maid yells holding off the advancing guards with precision strikes. The protagonist's fingers dance across the holographic controls, entering the sequence they never thought they'd remember. The device lights up, a surge of energy coursing through the core. The virus is uploaded. The aliens' systems start to flicker, screens going dark, alarms shutting off. For the first time in decades, the surveillance that had suffocated humanity goes silent. But as the final line of code is entered, the protagonist feels a cold hand clamp onto their shoulder. One of the alien guards had gotten to close. The protagonist spins around, eyes wide, bracing for the worst. But in that split second, 
The maid steps in, delivering a blow that sends the alien crash into the ground. We're not done yet, she says, we have to get out of here. As the central command descends into chaos, the protagonist realizes they've done it. The virus has been unleashed, but the fight is far from over. The aliens will regroup, and retaliation is inevitable. Part 4 ends with the group escaping the command center. The protagonist now fully committed to leading the rebellion. Knowing that the real war has just begun, humanity has struck its first blow, but the path ahead is darker and more dangerous than ever. This final part sets up the aftermath of the infiltration, leaving room for future conflict and the ongoing battle between humans and their alien overlords. The protagonist's journey is now one of leadership and survival, as they guide humanity toward an uncertain future. The cold night air bites at the protagonist's face as they emerge from the tunnel, the distant wail of alien sirens filling the city streets. The central command is in chaos behind them, and the maids guide the protagonist through a maze of alleys and shadows. The weight of what they've just done settles in, both exhilarating and terrifying. We've bought ourselves time, the first maid says, her voice steady but urgent, but they'll be coming for us, and soon, we need to get to a safe house. The protagonist nods, still processing the enormity of their actions. They've crippled the alien surveillance network, but the victory feels fragile. What happens now? They ask, glancing over their shoulder as alien patrols sweep the streets in the distance. Nah, the second mate says, the rebellion has its opening, but you need to lead them, without someone to unify the resistance. This spark will die out. The words hit the protagonist hard. They hadn't planned to become a leader let alone the face of humanity's uprising. They were just a person, trying to survive in the shadows of an oppressive regime. Yet, here they were thrust into a position of power, with the future of humanity in their hands. They reached the safe house, a hidden bunker deep beneath the city's forgotten tunnels. Inside, a group of human rebels greets theme faces etched with hope and determination. News of the surveillance, shutdown has already spread through the underground channels, and the mood is electric. The rebellion, once fragmented and scattered, now has a chance to strike back. You did it, one of the rebels says, grasping the protagonist's hand. We're ready to fight. We've been waiting for this moment. The protagonist looks around the room, seeing the faces of people who have suffered under alien rule for too long. The maids stand by their side, silent and watchful. They're all complete for now. Listen, the protagonist says, finding their voice. We've dealt the aliens a blow, but this is just the beginning. They'll regroup, and when they do, they'll come at us harder than ever. We can't afford to be complacent. We need to be ready. The room quiets as the gravity of the situation sinks in. The rebels nod in agreement, their resolve strengthening with every word. We need to mobilize. The protagonist continues. The surveillance is down, but it won't stay that way forever. We need to hit them where it hurts dark at their supply lines, their weapons caches and their communication towers. We take out their ability to respond, and we give ourselves a fighting chance. The group erupts into action, forming plans, discussing tactics, and organizing strikes. The protagonist watches as the rebellion, once scattered and hopeless, begins to take shape into something powerful, something capable of real resistance. But even as the energy in the room surges, the protagonist can shake the feeling that the battle ahead will be unlike anything they've ever faced. The aliens are relentless, and they will stop at nothing to crush humanity's rebellion. Later that night, as the plans are finalized and the rebels prepare to strike, the protagonist finds a quiet corner of the bunker. The weight of leadership bears down on them. They never wanted this. They never asked to be the one to lead humanity into war. But now, there's no choice. One of the maids approaches, her expression unreadable. You did well today, but this is just the first step. I know, the protagonist says quietly, I'm not sure I'm ready for the rest. None of us are ever ready, the maid replies, but you have something the aliens don't understand humanity's will to survive. That's what makes you dangerous. The protagonist looks up, meeting the maid's gaze, and what if I fail? The maid tilts her head, as if considering the question, if you fail, then humanity will fail with you, but if you succeed, you'll spark something unstoppable. The words hang in the air, a heavy truth that settles deep within the protagonist's soul. This isn't just about survival anymore, it's about fighting for something bigger than themselves fighting for the future of the human race. 
As dawn breaks, the protagonist steps back into the main room, where the rebels are ready and waiting. They take a deep breath, knowing that the path ahead is fraught with danger, uncertainty, and sacrifice. But as they stand before their people, they know one thing for certain, they won't be fighting alone. Part 5 ends with the protagonist, fully embracing the role as the leader of the rebellion, standing on the precipice of a war that will determine the fate of humanity. The spark of rebellion has been lit, and now it's up to them to fan the flames into an unstoppable force. This final part concludes the arc with the protagonist, stepping into their newfound leadership role, while setting the stage for an epic battle between humans and their alien oppressors. The future of the rebellion is uncertain, but the protagonist is now ready to face whatever comes next. The rebellion is in motion, the safe house is now a flurry of activity as plans unfold and assignments are handed out every rebel, from seasoned fighters to those who had only known life in the shadows, prepares for the coming storm, the protagonist stands at the center, feeling the gravity of their position, they've gone from a lone survivor to the leader of humanity's last hope, the weight is overwhelming, but the fire inside them burns brighter than ever. The maids, now fully revealed as high-ranking members of the resistance, come forward with final instructions. The first strike needs to be flawless, one of them says. We'll take out their primary communication tower at the heart of the city. It's heavily guarded, but with the surveillance systems down, we have a narrow window to make our move. The protagonist nods. I'll lead the team. We go in, disable their backup systems, and destroy the tower. That'll cripple their ability to coordinate a response. After that, we hit their supply routes. The maids exchange a glance, impressed by the protagonist's resolve. You've come a long way in a short time, one of them says. But be careful. The aliens have other forces we haven't encountered yet. Whatever they throw at us, the protagonist replies, we'll be ready. As night falls, the strike team gathers in the hidden tunnels beneath the city. The protagonist, dressed in makeshift armor, stands at the front their heart pounding with adrenaline and fear, the rebels behind them are tense but focused, ready to lay down their lives if it means giving humanity a chance. They reach the communication tower, its towering structure glowing eerily against the dark sky, alien guards patrol the perimeter, but without their surveillance systems they're vulnerable, the team moves quickly, silently, slipping past the guards and entering the tower's core. Inside, the alien technology hums with power, the protagonist leads the way, their hands gripping the device that will disable the tower systems, the rebels spread out, taking their positions as the countdown begins. Just as the protagonist reaches the control panel, the alarms blare, the aliens have discovered them, the guards rush in, weapons drawn, and chaos erupts. Hold them off, the protagonist shouts, as the rebels engage in combat. The battle is fierce, but the rebels fight with everything they have. The protagonist works furiously to bypass the alien security measures. Knowing every second counts, the aliens are relentless, their forces closing in from all sides. Suddenly, a deep rumble shakes the ground. The aliens have activated their heavy, artillery massive, mechanical beasts designed to crush any resistance. One of them bursts into the control room, its eyes glowing with lethal intent. The protagonist freezes, knowing this could be the end, but before the alien machine can strike, one of the maids steps forward, throwing herself in its path. Go, she shouts, as she takes on the machine with her enhanced strength, buying the protagonist's precious time. With a surge of determination, the protagonist completes the sequence, plugging the device into the tower's core. The system flickers, then goes dark, a wave of energy pulses outward shutting down the aliens' communications across the city. It's done, the protagonist shouts, fall back. The rebels retreat, narrowly escaping the collapsing tower, as the alien forces scramble to respond. The sky above the city is lit up by explosions as the tower crumbles to the ground, taking the aliens' command structure with it. Back at the safe house, the rebels are celebrating, but the protagonist stands apart, watching the horizon, they know this is only the beginning. The aliens will retaliate, and the war is far from over. One of the maids approaches, her face unreadable. You did it. The first strike was a success, but there's something you need to know. The protagonist turns, sensing the seriousness in her voice. What is it? The aliens, this was just a small part of their force. The real power lies in their homeworld. We've only just scratched the surface. If we're going to win this war, we'll need more than just a few victories. The protagonist's heart sinks, 
they had hoped this would deal a major blow to the aliens, but now it's clear that the fight ahead will be far more brutal than they ever imagined. Then we'll take the fight to them, the protagonist says, their voice resolute, will unite humanity, and we'll find a way to destroy them at the source. The maid smiles, a rare glimmer of hope in her eyes, you truly are the leader we've been waiting for. As dawn breaks over the city, the protagonist looks out at the skyline, smoke still rising from the destruction they've caused. The rebellion is no longer just a dream it's real, and it's growing. Humanity has struck its first blow, and the aliens will soon learn just how dangerous humans can be. The final part ends with the protagonist, standing at the forefront of the rebellion, knowing that the road ahead is long and filled with uncertainty, but with the fire of resistance burning in their heart, they're ready to lead humanity to victory or die trying. This closing part sets the stage for the larger war to come, with humanity's first victory serving as a catalyst for future battles. The protagonist has fully embraced their role as the leader, and the rebellion is now a force to be reckoned with.